In this video, we're going to work on something quite advanced, which is a Gantt chart in ChartJS and basically a project management tool. If you look at this, you can see here we have all the quarters. It, the project is divided into quarters, and if I hover over the red bar, which is the official actual time of the project, you can see here when it's done and how many days is it is delayed if there would be any delay. And you can see here, this is an ongoing project, so we don't measure yet the delay, but if it's 100%, you can see here, we have a delay of 30 days here. And you can see here as well, no delay, and then here as well, ongoing project, we can see 75% done, and we already use 100% of the budget time. So let's start to explore how we can use this, because this is a very advanced topic. In this video, we're going to focus on how to create a Gantt chart for project management in ChartJS. And this question came from one of my other videos about how to make a horizontal float floating bar chart in ChartJS. So in here, if you scroll down, you can see this question came from Vikas Rajan. So a special thank you to Vikas for asking the question. And this is what Vikas asked. I have a problem. Let's say I have a project consists of three tasks. Task one was supposed to be finished at 100% in two quarters, but it took three quarters to finish. Likewise, the task to exceed or finish before time. So basically what he really wanted here was, as he says here as well, it needs to be represented on the chart on the y-axis name of the task and on the x-axis the quarter. And the percentage will be written on the bars themselves. Is there any way to do it with, with charts or any other library? Well, in charts, yes, it is possible. I'm going to show you exactly how. So what he's really asking here is a Gantt chart where you can see the dates or basically the quarter and the progress of it and the expected progress of or the except or what is that the expected budget time and if it if it was completed within that yes or no. So let's start to make one. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to grab our default code, go to charges3.com, getting started and if you see this here, for some reason, Google Chrome gives me this error. Anyway, copy this. And if you want to understand what this code does, make sure you watch this video here that explains all of the JavaScript of that. Paste that in here, and then we're going to cut out, oops, cut out this and paste in there. Once we did that, save this, refresh, there we are. So now we have a bar chart. So what we're going to do is we want to convert this into a horizontal bar chart and then we do some more adjustment on it. So let's scroll down here and let's convert it first to a horizontal bar chart. To do that, we go in the options here and then we just say index axis. Then we indicate here instead of the X, which is this default value, we're going to put it on the Y. So comma and save. And the moment we do this and we refresh, you will see that these X axis labels are now moved to the y-axis. There we are. So now we have the first part. Of course, this is not what we want because we will be eventually having some other items as well. So what I want to do is right now is to get this x-axis here up because eventually we want to see here quarter one, two, three, four, etc., etc. So we're going to do that now. So in here we're going to say here x-axis, and then we're going to say here the position, and this position will be set now on. Top. Make sure you have a comma here, save that, refresh, there we are. So now we have the second part. What I want to do now is focus on first the data here. So I want to have five tasks here. I'm going to remove all these dates here, but I'm going to put in five tasks. And then what I want to do, to do is convert it into a floating bar chart where we will have segments covering it. All right. So to do this, well, we have to do a few things because we need to convert it also to a date. So we have to do two items. First of all, let's duplicate this. We need a second data set. Put a comma here, paste set. All right. And what this data set will be, this will be our budgeted time of our um, projected time. And this is the actual, actual time of the project. So once we did this, if I save this now, you will see here, now we have two bars here, beautiful. Of course, let's start to convert the final, a few other items, task one, task two, task three, task four, and finally task five. All right, so we have five different tasks. 
If I save this now, there you are with the task. What I want to do now is because it is a deep projected time, I will just select this as a, a black color. That's the lowest value here or the lowest one in here. That's this one here. Same here for this. If I save this, this will make it nice. Oh, did I put a comma here? No. Put a comma. Save. Comma. Now we have a black bar. All right. So the black bar is the projected time. The red bar, which is the very top value, I'll just we can just cut out this one and then just overwrite it all. There you are. Same here, except here I want to make sure this is value one. Save that. Refresh. All right. So now what we're going to do is. Before we make this, we, we can make it already floating, but we need to convert it into a date as well. So what would probably be the most logical thing is just to add up the date item. So to do this, I need to go to chart.js. So we go here to chart.js and in chart.js, you can see here these options. Just go to the ecosystem here and in the ecosystem, you will get the date adapter. So if I'm going to scroll down here. You can see here the adapters. Click on this. There you can see here the options. This is what I would recommend. Go for these one or the other of these two, but I prefer this one if I don't need to do any date modification. If I need to do a date modification, I'll be preferring this. This one is deprecated, meaning that it's not being updated anymore. Why why this over that if I don't do any modification? Because this requires only one single JavaScript file. This requires Two JavaScript files so that's why I would prefer this so if I click on this and the only reason you would do uh, modifications uh, or you use the other one because of the modifications because it's easier to use compared to date FNS or at least for me so that's why I prefer the other one if I need to do some customizations anyway in here we're going to scroll down here and you can find here this is the file we needed the chart.js date adapter FNS and then here there's a, a whole bundle all right, I'm going to grab only this line because the upper line we don't need. We already have that one. And then we're going to load this after the chart.js library. And the reason why we do this is because the chart.js library uh, or this date adapter has some dependencies that first needs to be loaded in here or else you get an error. So if I save this now, nothing will happen here. So what we need to do now is start working on doing some adjustments. First of all, I go here and we're going to put in the time and the time will be on the X axis here above. So it will eventually say the quarter or how many quarters we have or the quarters. All right, so we're going to put in here and what I'm going to say here is the following. I'm going to say here time and in the time, well, before we even do that, we need to say here first uh, type equals time. We need to create a time object so it will be recognized. So we say type, the type of scale is time. And then once we did that, the time object allows us to use certain values, which is in this case, the unit. And what is the unit I would like to display? Well, uh, oh, that, that doesn't have to be like that. Sorry, that's already time. We are in the time. So in the time, we're going to create a unit and this unit will be a string quarter. If I save this now, refresh, all right, so you get here now some errors. It can be two things. Unexpected identifier on A1. Did we, put a, did we put a comma here? Yes, this is all fine. All right, so what we need to do here then is the following. We need to convert this. And what I mean by converting is basically the date here needs to be start to convert as well just to see if this one works because I have a feeling that we might have something here or not. So what we're going to do now is we're going to basically create the floating then just to see if that will work. Because I suspect because of these issues here, we have a uh, error. So let's look at it. So I'm going to delete this. I'm going to put in here specific dates. And in this case, because this is a floating bar chart, we're going to put in here the starting date and the ending date. So that's like a Gantt chart with a project, starting project time and ending project time. Normally I would prefer to use data structures, but a floating bar chart does not support data structures. So what I'm going to do in here, just very simple, we have five projects. Let's say we start in January 2001, well, 2012, uh, 21, sorry. And then comma, and then we want to do it at the end of the quarter. That would be, well, let's say on four, or April four, sorry, April one, of course, it will be done. All right, so we put a comma here, I'm going to just so 
this task will be correlated with this. With the paste here. Let me just do, do a few more. So let's say here we will start in April and this will end 7 July. And then we could do here maybe we can just say another one. It will start at 3. And this one will, will be ending on 5.31. That will be May. Alright, then here maybe 6. And this one will end at 9. 31 or is it 30 September remember September is different and then here uh, 10 that means October 1 and ends at 12 31 New Year's Eve all right this is the projected time that would mean that the actual time should have the same one as well so I'm going to grab here the this one and then in here we just duplicate this but then here we you put in different dates let's say this one is a few days too late this one is uh, 15 days late. This one is on time. That one eventually we went to 10. Well, 10. Uh, was it October the 30th? And this one is again on time. So if I save this now and refresh, let's see what happened here. Unexpected identify 93. All right, so let's check here what's going on. I have suspicion that we're missing something here a 93 type unit quarter. Uh, let's see here what am I missing all right so after looking I realized very sloppy mistake on my part just make sure you have a comma here and if you would do this refresh we should see here something the end result is of course not good because you can see here right now we have this so for some reason it counts back here and sometimes I have tried to figure out why there might be a time conversion or something anyway to solve this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this tiny trick in here to set a minimum value. Since we have a minimum value, and the minimum value will be, in our case, uh, the beginning of the year. So I will just select it here and I'll say min value, and then I'll say here this value will be 2021, and this is January 1. Comma here, make sure you have that comma. If I save this now, refresh. Now we are starting to get something that looks quite acceptable, but of course we have still some items to work on. You can see the tooltip is not good. This here should be more better. I don't like these missing items here. So let's fix this part. So what we need to do here in the border, we're going to say comma here, and then we say here border skipped. And this will say false. And the reason why is by default it is skipped at the very starting point here or if it's on a uh, x-axis here at the bottom like a vertical bar chart is at the bottom but of course now we have a floating bar chart so we don't have to skip the border because this is a default setting in chart.js comma save this here refresh there we are so now we have these are closing what i'm going to do right now just to hide the tooltip because i find them very distracting later on i will have to unhide it because we'll be, we're going to use that so i'm going to say here plugins tooltip and then I'll say here uh, enable enable false comma here save this refresh all right so now we have that so what I'm going to do next is well let's see we have to do a few items I want to figure out how we can position these here more better because I want to put it here Basically, it should be eventually in the center here, but that is not possible. I've tried to figure it out, couldn't figure it out, but I can set it here at the beginning. So that will be a very decent uh, starting point for us. So what we're going to do here in the x-axis, I'm going to say here, we set the offset on false. Save this, refresh. And the reason I'm doing that is if ever there would be something weird on the left and the right side, it will remove that and will make sure that this all is neat neatly organized you will notice that if you have more different data sometimes there's like a space between here or these lines are not really equal so then it will clean it up so that's the only reason why i'm doing that next thing what i want to do here is eventually figuring out uh what is that the labels i need to figure out not the labels but i need to figure out this part here so what we're going to search here all right so i was looking for the right term found it it is called the ticks and the reason why these items here are is called the label ticks and the area of the tick marks 
but this together is basically the ticks itself. So that's the object. So in here, we're going to say ticks, and then we say align, and we're going to put in start. You might say, why not center? Well, if I save this first, refresh, it is at the center here because it sees this as the starting point. So here, and, you, and if you would say center, it moves here. That's the default. So this is the best I can do for now. Maybe in the future, I'll find a way to do it. I know there's some ways to do it, but it's very complicated. And for now, I will not focus on that. So we have this. What I want to do as well is the grid lines should be dashed. So I'm going to put that as well in here. So I'm going to go in here and then I'll say here, grid. And in the grid, I'll say border dash, border dash. And then here we can put in here how, how many pixels would be the line and how many white space we have. So first one is basically the line and the second part would be the white space. So let's say for now, I'll just make it five, five. So after five pixels of line, we have five pixels of white space. If I save this here, pay attention on the line, refresh, you will see now it's slightly pixelated or it is now dotted, but I'm not sure if you're able to see it because the, the color is quite, quite light to see. So it's hard to notice. Anyway, that's just a extra I add in there. So now we have that one. What I want to do now is start to focus on setting up what we call the data labels here. And for the data labels, we're going to use a plugin called the data labels plugin. To do this, we need to go here to the cdnjs.com and, and search for chart.js-plugin-data labels. This plugin that we're going to use, the data labels plugin version, the latest version as of now is 2.0.0. So we're going to grab the very top. I'm going to just grab this script tag here. All right. Put it in here and then we go up here. As you can see here, then we can load it. We can just load it here below. It doesn't matter. So I have to put that in there. All right, so once we load this, make sure you load it at down or after this one. That's very important. After the charge yes library. Why? This one is dependent on whatever is in here. So once you do this, you save this, nothing happens yet. And the reason why nothing happens is because we didn't activate it, and the plugin. So we're going to register the plugin now or activate the plugin. So in here, in the options, just below the options, we say comma. And then we say here, plugins. Bracket, and then we're going to type in the following chart with capital C, data with capital D, labels with capital L. Save this, refresh. Now, as you can see, we're getting the values that we have from our data here. But of course, this is not the value that I want. What I want to grab here is the percentage. So I need to do some tricks, and this is why I, be, I previously. Previ Sorry, I previously said I want to use data uh, data structures, but that's not allowed with the floating bar chart. That's absolutely pity, but uh, I guess they're probably developing that part. However, because we cannot do that, we will do something else. What I'm going to do in here, I'm going to put in here just a new item in here. And what I will call this, this will be called the task, task completed. And this task completed is basically an array. And since this is the projected time, I will always assume this is 100%. So I'm going to say here 100, 100, 100, 100, and one more time. All right. So this is allowed to do because we, it's just a JavaScript object. We just make them ourselves as long as it is not anything similar to this here. If it's something else that has already been in use, then it might override the command so that's not allowed but make sure you make a unique one so i'm going to grab this one and then i'm going to say here exactly the same enter put it in here but then this one will be slightly different uh this is 100 but this one is still not done it's 80 percent and this one is maybe 75 percent this one 100 and this is 90 percent so if i save this now refresh you will see here nothing happens so basically right now it still just grabs these data from here. So what I need to do now is in the data labels, say, or reassign which value to select. Very important here. All right. So we're going down here. Then we add here somewhere the plugins you can see here. I'll put a comma here. And then what I will say here is the following. I'm going to use here the data labels object. And this data labels object can be used because we have used or 
we have uh, registered the plugin chart.js data labels. So this allows us now to create this because it recognizes this is created specifically with this script here. This is the reason why we added the script. So in here, we can start to put in some commands. So what I want to do here is basically the following. I want to say here, I want to reformat or just basically I'm going to type in formatter and then uh, format the text in the labels into my preferred structure, which will be eventually the percentages. So what we're going to do in here in the formatter, I'm going to put in here two parameters, the value and the context parameter. And this is basically what we call a callback. So we are allowed to use here a uh, function, what is that, a arrow function operator. So another word for this would be just put in here function, and then you can remove this. But uh, these days it's more better to have it like this. The shorter your code, the better. Although to a certain extent, if it's readable for you and for anyone else who would manage your code. So what we're going to do here, first of all, I would like to show you what we really have here. So let's click on value here. If I save this now, refresh, you can see here we get the two values here. That's all fine, but we don't need this really. But what we do need is the context. And that is the second one in line here. And the reason we need the second one, you might say, then why do we have this? You could delete this, but if you do that, it will not work because context will basically be considered the values here. So that's why we need to have a second one. So you could, you could name this anything you want. So it doesn't matter, but we need the second item here. Refresh. You can see here, now we get a lot of information here. And what I really want here is just some basic data that is the data index and let's see what we can find more here you can see here a few items and including this one here which is our task completed and you can see here all the numbers we have set in here so what i really want is two things i want to grab here the data index which would indicate which one we need to grab so i'm going to grab this data index because it will say index zero or index uh if you hover over another one, you will see here the which one we will get, index number three. There you are. And what we want to do then is we want to grab here the exact index value, which one would be matching with that. So we need the index and we need the task completed. So I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about. So we say here, if I do here, yes, the, I guess we can do the data index. If I do this, refresh, okay, you see, you see here everything, but if I hover over it, it should show here the numbers, which is correct. This one is zero, one, two, three, four. All right, you can see this. Beautiful. So next one, what I want, it's exactly the same. But now what I want to do is, I want to get the task completed. So let's do context again. Click on this and look for task completed. How do you get there? Well, you we can click on data set. And in data set, we have task completed. All right, so if I hover over it, you can see here now, from data set dot task completed. And then we have to get here the array index number, which we have. I'm going to show you as well how to do that. Uh, task completed, but the other one was data set. So the dot data set. So if I save this, refresh, you can see here now if I hover over it, you show everything. All right. But now I want to show a specific index. If it's only zero, say refresh, you will get 100, which is this one here. And then even if you go anywhere else, it's fixed. But now let's copy this. Put it in here, save that, refresh. We get everything, but if I hover over, you look at this, beautiful. That's what we need. This is the value we want to return eventually. So what I'm going to say here is the following. Enter, return. What am I going to return? I'm going to use here template literals. Very important, backspace, of no, backtick, backtick. So backtick is different from single quotation. You can see the difference here. So the first one here, which is the backtick, is being used and you can find it on your on your keyboard just below the escape button. So I say back tick back tick and then what I want to do here is the following. I'm going to use a dollar sign and then I'm going to use the uh, open parentheses and this will indicate eventually the item that I want. Is there will be the variable. But what I want to do here is I want to say a constant and then we can say here we can say uh, uh, what is that? The task percentage that would be probably a good name percentage task percentage remove the console law settings here semicolon there and then what i want to do is i want to grab this task percentage 
And because of these template littles, we can easily put in now a percentage symbol here. This is basically a string. So to recognize everything here, it's an easier way for concatenation. So you could say here this percentage complete or something like that. You can do anything, but I would say just the percentage is fine. Save this, refresh, and there you are. So now we have the percentages. However, we're not done yet. And the reason why we're not done, I would like to have at least, if I have a tooltip, I want to hover over the two, the items. And then I want to see a little bit more information. For example, here, how many days have we been delayed? How many days have we been delayed here? And etc. etc. So you can see here we have an access. I want to calculate what is the access because as a project manager, that is important. So that's like an add-on. Let's focus on that now. So to do this, we need to have the tooltip again active. So I'm going to save this, refresh. Then you can see here we get all of this, but you can see we get some issues as well. We get here also everything converted into the time. So what we need to do is we need to convert it back into a date. And of course, you can see this is the projected one. The projected time has no meaning for us, or at least this um, this basically could be hidden. So we're going to hide this tooltip. And I noticed this text here says project time. Doesn't make any sense. It should be projected time. So let me just rephrase that one. Projected time, because it's the time that we project. And then, all right, so then we go back here in the tooltip. And let's start to focus on this. And this will be still, well, we have still a lot of work to do here. But the first thing that I want to do here in the tooltip is I'm going to put in here a filter that avoids that we show this one. This one has no meaning for us, so we do not want to hide this. This is just projected. This one is the one we want to deal with, or the information from. So we're going to say here, filter column, and here, this is also a callback. And this callback has the tooltip item. Then again here, the arrow function expression, and then in here, we're going to say return, and what we're going to do, oh, let me, before, before I even do that, I want to just do a console log, so you have understanding what we're doing here let's save this one here refresh and now if i hover over look what we get we get some information here and what i really want to know is this the data set index so we have two index or sorry not index two data sets you can see here data set one is the or data set zero is what we call the projected time and data set one is the actual which is the red bar and you can see here if we are on data set one means that we hovered on this red item here Let's look at it. You can see here the data set index one and also the index number or the data index of that one. However, this is the key information I want. I'm going to grab this. So in here, I'm going to say dot this. And now if I save this, we will, should see here, look at that. Beautiful, zero, one, zero, one, which is correct. So what I want to do now is an if statement basically here for this. I want to return, so let's return the tooltip item uh, or return as long as if it is one. If it's not one, don't return anything. Save this, refresh, and now we hover over it. There you can see. Now it starts to show. If you hover here, it doesn't work. Beautiful. So it does, you might notice that there is some effect here. That's the only thing I cannot avoid because of this. However, this is the best we can do and I think this is quite acceptable. So what I want to do now is to fix the actual time because look at this here. We have the starting and ending time in the tooltip. That means nothing. Right now it's just numbers. And the reason why they are because they're converted into milliseconds. And this milliseconds must be converted now into a date. Or specifically what we want to have here eventually is how much or when is the deadline or when did we complete the date? Or if ever we didn't complete it, what is the actual or the current state of it was the date we're today on and then if we completed it like this one here i want to know how many days are we delayed so that's a very important part all right so let's start and work on that now so within the two tips we have to continue on we have still work to do here so in the two tip first of all i want to just change the two tip you can see here i want to push it up so it's not blocking the text here that doesn't make any sense anyway so i say here why align and then we're going to say here the carrot, which which I talk about is carrot is this, yes. That's the triangle. If you wonder what's a carrot, it's the triangle here. I want to point it down to the bottom. If it points it down, it means that the cloud will go up. 
So we say here, bottom. Save that, refresh. All right, so that is slightly better. It doesn't block anymore the 100% and 80%. So the next thing what I want to do, comma here, is going to look for the next item, which will be the callback. So we're going to do the callbacks and we need to work in the labels because you can see here our labels here, which shows just the time, which is the starting and ending time in this here. But we need to convert this back. So let's start to do this. We're going to say a callback, a callbacks, all right? And then in here, what we need to do is start to say, we want to do the label, and this label is also a callback function. So I'm going to say your context, that's the one I need, and then I get an arrow function expression, and then in here, I'm going to do the following. Let's do a context first, or console.log context and what I want to do this one here just comment this out we don't need to show this now so to avoid any confusion if we going to check our developer tab save this refresh here and now if I hover over you can see here now what we get beautiful we get the information but you can see also the raw data and the raw data is quite useful for us but we also might need the formatted data yeah I realize that we might need them we need might need one or the other so we have to see on this because we need to convert it back so what we're going to do here is the following i want to say here uh oh, what we also need let's see here if we have that there let me double check over here i want to know here do we have the task completed if we go to data set we have here the task completed so what i want to say is basically this this one should say in progress and if it's 100 percent done we would say task completed or completed at so that's what we're going to do here so we're going to work on that so what we're going to say here first how do we know if something is completed we need to check here on this so this is our object we created and how to get there well it's from data sets and then to task completed and then of course the index or the data index number which would match here so let's go and do this so we're going to say data sets task completed so context the data set dot task completed if i save this now refresh hover over you will see everything all right so then if i would do this so now we have this one i just want to copy this paste that comment out save and then delete all of this Let's see what we need now hover over it and you can see here it will not trigger this one anymore if you hover here it doesn't trigger anything only on this one so that is nice and right now you see it's empty don't worry about it, we have to solve that. And I just realized task, I'm not sure why this is being as task number two. Oh, all right, misspelled here, sorry. I'll fix that later on. So what we're going to do here is the data set index is fine, but I need the data index. That's number one. So then what I do here, dot this, then we will grab here everything. One, two, three, all right. So then what we can do is the following. If I put this here, and then you put your brackets, because this is the index number, save that, refresh, we should see 100%, 80%, etc., etc. All right, so we're getting the numbers here. So, what I want to do then, and this is basically what I would say, this will be called the task uh, percentage, which is basically, I just realized now, this and this is almost identical except for one thing. It is, oh, there's nothing, except that it's in one in a different location. As you can see here, we could just copy that. I just realized that. Sorry about that. Anyway, repetition is very useful. So what I'm going to do next is I want to say here, and this should be a constant, by the way. All right. So the next thing would be, this will be the next item is basically the completed date. I want to get the completed date here. So let's do a console log and do again a context. And let's see what we need here. Refresh. We're going to hover over it now again. We get the completed date. And for us, the completed date must be recalculated. And the reason why we need to grab these numbers and then, well, let's see if we can find the official dates here. Parse, custom parse. Well, we have probably like this as well. It's somewhere in here. Well, what we need is basically this. We need to have the number value, which is the item itself. And I think this one here consists of all the data. Am I correct? No, not really. All right, so it doesn't matter. But what I really want is I want to grab a, uh, the, basically the parsed. We can just grab this one then and the x value here. 
we just did date and I guess that's exactly the same here or no that's the ending here anyway I want to grab this one here what I need to do is this is a new date but I need to eventually convert this into the uh, format of a date why I get the x value uh, I guess basically we want to know what's the ending date the ending date would be here what we are right now so if we would still be ongoing this will gradually improve as well or increase as well so I'm going to say here dot parsed and then dot x so if I save this now refresh we should get the value all right you can see everyone have a different date but this is in milliseconds so we need to convert this now into a nice uh, date so what we're going to do here is uh, let's call this our completed date this is the constant for completed date and we equal this that's the parse one all right and then we're going to say here is the constant is a clean date and the reason what I want to do here is well basically we do that and I guess we could even get the other one doesn't matter well the clean date could be even the other one I uh, I guess we can we don't even have to recalculate this although we, we have to divide them from each other uh, let's see here what we need to do we're going to grab this one I will just for now I'm going to grab I do a console log I just realized maybe something could be even easier by just getting the ending date here if I refresh here all right we grab this and then I'll just grab here the formatted date I'm just looking in my notes as well and I realize that probably we could just grab the raw value where we get this date here of course you can format this as well maybe that was the reason why we could format this into the shape and then you can do anything about it. I think that's even better sorry so let's let's do that one I'll just say here constant and I'll call this uh, clean date because that is probably the reason why we should do that is we're going to grab the completed date and then in here I'll say dot get full year all right and then we say a plus and then here slash because eventually what I want to do is this I just basically want to get this here again and then here 12 and then maybe one like one December this is basically what I'm trying to do here, but then in slash or dash, you could do slash or dash. In this case, I'm doing dash. And the reason I'm doing this is basically you can check in JavaScript always to convert anything else. If you would get the, the, the formatted date, it might not always get the right thing, but you can get that one as well. We can get even this raw date here, which is basically the same, but here you could do it also with text so but for now i'll just put something in and if you really want to go deeper in this explore this but if you struggle with send me a message for a request of video i'll make a video of that but for now i i will just show it like this just for the sake of it because i noticed that this video is getting very extensive so what i'm going to do here next is the following i want to do this complete the date get month plus one and this could be eventually converted into an array or uh, where we compare the month with an array that you get the text but right now just a number and then we have a plus and then I'll just say here again another slash and then we say here plus again for concatenation and we say complete the date dot get date so doing this what will happen is we just convert it back console log then we say clean date let's see if I save this refresh hover over it oh Full year is not a function. Let's see what's going on with full year. Uh, completed date dot get full year. All right, I didn't uh, expect that one. All right, so let me just check. All right, so the reason why this happened was I realized here I need to make this a date object or else we cannot convert this back. So I'm going to make this a date object. I forgot about this. Should be done doing this. Once I did this here, save that refresh there we are and now we should grab the date all right so now we have the date here in a certain structure you can play around with this and if you want a special video request let me know so this is one of the items but now what i want to do here is the next part so we have this label here 
uh, what do we want to do with this label eventually oh let me just retype task two all right go back here so what are we going to do here now we're going to put in basically the items in the label so in here i'm going to say the following here and this will be the delay days and what i want to do here is basically a text because let me show you what i'm going to do we're going to return this I'm going let's say return if i would say here the clean date date and then what i want to do here well let's do a, a string as well so it's a, a plus we concatenate then I say here and delays of how many days so what would be here this would be here the delay this here must be a variable so if I save this refresh you can see this is what's happening now here and delays of that amount of days if there would be a delay if there's no delay we don't want to show of course the delays it makes sense so let's start and work on this now and this later on this will be eventually return value returned value so in the delay days what we need to do is we need to get the difference so the, the the date difference would be basically on this so let's look at this so to get this i need to go here let's say constant console log context let's see if we can get that so save this here all right so if i hover over this we should see a few items here and uh, once you look at it look if you look at this here i realize if i hover over one or the other apparently they trigger both am i correct is it doing what i expected all right this one is working it just takes some time i realize so if i go here it works then if we go on this one that doesn't work all right fair enough doesn't matter eventually the mechanics are same so let me explain why we have this index one here and you can see here the uh, exact location here would be the uh, let's see where are we going to get that most likely from this one or from the parse version here this one here but what i want to do is this because this parse version is the calculation of the very ending value so if i get here and this is from index data set index one i know there's the same one data set in index zero so you understand that logic because they're both identical but this one of course shows the official time when it stops here so it will give us this if we do this ending here minus that we will get the difference in seconds that we convert into days and that's how we're going to play with it so i hope you figure or understand this one but what i'm going to do now is just pay attention constant and let me say here the date difference and this date difference will be a new date object and where do we get this date object well we're going to grab it basically in here and but we're specifically we're going to say here well we have here the data then dot data sets oh i'm going to also explain to you why i'm doing this because right now you might not see this here so let me explain how i how i get that the, because this is what i'm going to do data dot data sets one then i say here dot data let me get here the const let's see here brackets and then we say here context dot data index with the bracket and then here number one all right let me explain what this is Oops, before i even continue on look at this this one goes where exactly it goes to the data object the data object is in here and this here is basically this one and this here will go to data sets and then here the data and then here the data we get here the first and the last one and what i want to extract is the last one but if i say data set zero Will be this one here if i say data set one we will grab this one here and well, more specifically this one here so this minus that would calculate the difference and in this case you will see that there will be only four days of difference here and that is what we're doing here basically 
And how we grab them is based on the hover here. We can grab here this and then we also can grab the solid items. Basically, we don't even have to put a hover. We can put a solid one in here. I think it's also in there. If I go down here, uh, let's see here. Where are we? Where are we? Mm, yes, I, this one is quite tricky, even for me. All right. We have this here, which is a new date object. It grabs the item. But then what I want to say here is minus the following. Well, we can just copy this, but here we're going to paste that and then we say zero. So the context here would only indicate if we hover over this one, which uh, data index we are grabbing, as you can see here. If we hover over it, it will grab and calculate the difference of that. So anyway, I hope you are seeing the difference of this if you don't understand let me know but basically it would be if i would do these two separate you could see here this could be maybe projected time or this one no, this one is the projected time and the other one would be the well maybe i will do that one. that let me just break this down because i know it's really tough to read so i said constant this is the uh real time for the project all right and this one here is constant will be projected time for the project and what I'm really doing the date difference is calculating the real time minus the projected time I realize that this is more clear to understand I should do that earlier anyway sorry about that so there we are there we are uh, I guess we should just give it a proper indentation so now we have the date difference if I do the console log now we should be able to see something but you will get only a number we save this, refresh, we see here, uh, let's see which one is it, this 114, and then I see this 108, I'll just remove that, save that, refresh. There you are, there you are, this one as well, there you are, this one is zero, zero means no delay, but of course we're not done yet with the project, here, there you are, and there you are as well. So what I want to do here, maybe this one make 100%, so this one's already done, and then you will see later on, that will be very nice. Uh, where are we? Where is the 100? This one here. Sorry. On the task completed, 100%. Save this. Refresh. All right. Zero delays. And this is zero. There you are. And delays. So now we have a lot of parts here. We're still not done. Should we value. So next part is basically here to calculate the item itself, or at least to get now the date difference and not in these milliseconds but we need to divide that we're going to calculate now how do we grab this one so we want to say let delay we're going to grab here we use here a function called mat floor meaning if we would have a half day or a few hours it will always go go down to the lowest one yes so it will be always an integer and the reason why is we want we want to have one day two days not 1.5 days 1.3 if it's done on that day even if it's halfway through that's fine that's it's done on the day itself so we're going to say this here we're going to that's why we're going to do a math floor so it will always count down round it to the lowest integer so then we're going to say here the date difference that we have and then we're going to divide this because what we need to do is we have here the milliseconds and i don't want the milliseconds we need to calculate now into 24 hour segments so we're going to say it 1000 multiply by 60 which is 60 seconds and then because this 1000 is milliseconds multiply by 60 seconds multiply by 60 minutes and then multiply by 24 hours and then when you get that you will get officially the right value so i'm going to comment it out save that refresh and then you can see here how many days are we delayed 14 days four days 30 days zero days all right so what would happen if you would be even earlier done you will notice that then you might say well hold on uh we're done earlier so let's say we're done here on march 25 save that and then if i do this uh oh that we should not uh, that one here there you are then you say here we get minus seven don't worry about that we're going to make an if statement that filters out if it is minus seven we're just going to say zero so there's no delay because we're only measuring the delay we don't measure how many uh how many days in advance we're done so we're just very simple 
straightforward. All right. In here we have this clean date. So what we're going to do next? Let's see here. Uh, this is what we need to do, but this is the delay here. So in this, I'm going to create now a if statement that will filter out if we are minus seven or like a negative. So I'll say here delay equals. So now we're going to use if statement. If delay value is smaller than zero, if that is the case, or if that's true, in that case, show zero. Else, we want to just maintain the delay variable. So that's number one. So once we did this, we're almost done, and we can just basically now focus on this part here. So we have now all the information we need. Now you can just say the following. I'm going to say a constant, and this will be the response of the tooltip, and this will be based on the task percentage. And the reason why I'm going to grab the task percentage, I believe, and I, of course, if you're disagreeing with me, you can always, based on the code, you will understand how to change that, that if the task is still not complete, I don't want to measure the delays yet. Doesn't matter for me. I know only this because the delays mean nothing until I get the final amount of delays. So that's why I'm going to do that. But of course, you can you can do it differently because if you understand this structure, you can change that to your liking. So what I want to do is the following. I want to say here, uh, task percentage. If the task percentage will be equal strict to 100 so meaning if the task is done so that would mean that if 100 here these tasks the 100 then we will measure the delay if there's none we don't measure the delay yet so then we say here if that is the case then i will just make i'll just make a simple indentation here i'm going to use a shortcut of if statement but i do note that it's maybe slightly harder to read but it's basically if 100 is true if it's true in that case, I will say here, completed date, because I need to know what's the date. Then I'm going to say here the dollar sign. Then here we had the clean date. You can put it in here. And then what I also want is I'll say comma, total delay of, the, uh, well, let's put in here again, dollar sign. Remember, I'm using here the template literals. So total delay will be this. Um, let's see here. What is that? How much would that be? It will be just a delay value. And this is a response, or this is the constant here. So that will, it will grab this as a constant. And if that is not the case, so if not the case, I need to make here a column. Total delay of days. All right. Then we put in your column. And then we say here, else pending pending or on the on the construction whatever you want to call it uh, still pending pending project or maybe not pending but still uh ongoing maybe that's better ongoing going project all right ongoing project and then we just say here currently what is whatever today would be uh the clean date that would just be the current date so then we have that semicolon column here once we have this i want to return like basically what you did here is basically this here so now we return this put it in there all right save that here semicolon here and save that refresh now you will hover over it here you can see here total days of delay zero here now this is an ongoing project it shows the date and of course you can fine tune this to how you want it but it's 80 percent we are definitely late on that this one here we are going to be delayed with it because it's 75 percent only this one here, it shows here, we have been delayed for 30 days. All right, but it's completed on whatever the date would be. And this one here, no delay at all, done on time. And that's basically anything what we have to do here. So that's the entire item here from top to bottom. Of course, you might say, and then there's a few things that I would eventually do, maybe color code it here. If this is delayed here already, it should be red. But if it's on time, it should be green. So that might be an option as well, but I will let, leave that up to you, how you can do that one. And then if you enjoy this video, then I highly would recommend you to maybe check more about the tooltips, because maybe this here, this square item doesn't work, or you want to put even extra text on here, like urgent or something. 
check out this specific video that shows you how to add more information in the tooltip. You can go extremely, extremely deep in it. It will be very interesting and it goes very, very broad with every topic I cover. It's over 20 minutes. Explains every item of the tooltip that you should know.